Hello, this is Professor Sharon Mukherjee, I'm going to number 25. I've enrolled in the faculty internship program of Dr. Papa Sai of Edgar Marafai University, Aurangabad. And this is my seminar presentation. I've entered the presentation for this orientation program. The topic is Media, Culture and Tribes, an analysis of various social issues. Introduction. India is a land of various tribal communities. Since time immemorial, the tribal communities have been trying to conserve their cultures, practices, customs, and ethics through painstaking efforts. A culture cannot be preserved until and unless it is transmitted from one generation to another generation, and also its serious steps are not taken by respective authorities. But with the passage of time, lots of tribal communities are moving on the verge of endangerment across the globe. Some are already extinct. India is not an exception to that. Media is of the pillars that can take active role in preserving the culture of such tribal populations. But do the media play their role literally in preserving cultures or they marginalize such issues raised by the people of such communities? That is a very serious question that we are going to be asked in many ways. So the methodology for this presentation paper is qualitative. The methods are documentary analysis insights, sources are different in the secondary sources, reference books, channels, government documents, theses and websites. The research ethics, the ethics, research ethics are well kept in mind in order to prepare this presentation. Then as the discussion of Indian constitution and the tribal education. In the post-independence era in India, various initiatives were taken for the development of the tribal communities by replacing and modifying the RDI policies. Article 45 of the Constitution should in this context be mentioned as more specific regarding obligation of the state. It directs the state to strive to provide in a period of 10 years from the commencement of the Constitution free and compulsory education up to the age of 14 years. Article 46 of the Constitution directs to promote the education and economic interest of the weaker sections of the society and in particular scheduled caste and scheduled tribes with utmost care. Various educational policies in India are recommended and later on implemented by different commissions and committees appointed from time to time to suggest reforms in the educational system so as to meet adequately the emerging educational needs and demands of the country. The trend of literacy of several tribes in India. Literacy rate is an important indicator which shows the status of progress among tribal groups. The percentage of literacy of, literacy of tribes was only 8.5% in, in the year 1961, which has increased up to 63.1% in the year 2011. But female literacy of tribes is only 54.4% compared to male literacy of 71.7%. So there is a kind of a disparity in the case of the gender. It's gender disparity. During the post independence period, there are several instances that the Indian government implemented legislation and allocated funds to facilitate access to enrollment in primary education from grades 1 to 4, that is the primary educational setup, the primary schools. Consequently, both literary rates and cross enrollment ratios of boys and girls all over India among the tribal population have increased substantially in the past 50 years. So we are walking in the right direction. Trend of literacy of several tribes in India is being continued. The tribal people are usually very unstable with regard to their financial conditions. Thus, the parents usually do not motivate their children to go to schools. Instead, they refrain their children from going to schools as they require more orders to love their family and to survive. In most of the cases, the tribal people reside at a very remote and secluded area with very little scope for or no means of transportation. Hence, they are deprived of the opportunities of education. These are the bitter truths of about the uh, hardships in the life of the tribal people. Importance of media, or the role of media and social issues in handling through the issues of the tribes. We will try to look into the role played by media and tribal society in a broader perspective. We certainly pay attention to genuine issues encountered by tribal societies in modern day contexts that require to be addressed to mass media. Even the print media has been shrinking regularly 
media as advertising industry and is gradually shifting from print to electronic and digital media, many need to survive. These have tremendous influence on security, desired space for genuine issues, not only about tribal society, but people's issues as a whole that needs to be focused for their survival. So this market-driven electronic media, this market-driven globalized media, this market type mentality is actually usurping the space of the tribal people. It is not showcasing their cause. According to the Directorate of Advertisement and Visual Publicity, that is the Department of DAVP, Government of India in 2011, two newspapers were published in tribal languages in the central indigenous belt. The names of the two newspapers were Shogar's Nia, which is now discontinued. Many serious initiatives were taken for maintaining regular publication of the newspapers. Despite various serious and sincere initiatives, many tribal publications funded by local tribal groups are facing severe obstacles. Such difficulties related to poor distribution network, poor marketing infrastructure, lack of financial resources, etc. Even the tribal newspapers such as Beach Biko and Thukuria published in the Guru language are very strong. So financial conditions, financial hindrances are stopping the publication of papers, magazines which are published typically in tribal languages. Nowadays, this is very tragic that media has become a corporate entity with an intention for profit making business only. In most of the cases, their primary focus has been on publicity of their business to advertising. They often eliminate various major critical issues of the marginalized community. So, what is what is this talking about? It's talking about the ill treatment of the upper, by the upper class and the government and corporate institutions, leading to the gross infringement of human rights and so on and so forth. And these cases are not being addressed by the media because it is related with the tribal issues. That is, maybe it is not financially viable. Traditional folk media is often considered the indigenous equivalent of exogenous mass media and facilitates change and progress in tribal societies by communicating socio-economic change. Traditional media, the traditional needs of communication and expression exist before the advent of modern mass media. It talks about the traditional mass media. Traditional folk media leads to enculturation, adopts an increased acceptance of new messages and incorporate outside symbols in its forms and presentations. Tradition is handing down of beliefs, experiences and customs from generations to generations especially in oral form or by a process of traditional performance and communication. Traditional media is found expression in the daily social life of the people. Traditional folk media, again we are going, since ancient times the tribal people engage themselves in folk songs and dances, arts and crafts, rituals and festivals, etc. that are part of their daily life. Traditional media are indigenous channels of communication have been built character of entertainment which was made for expressing social, ritual, moral, emotional media, the folks such as folk songs, folk arts, folk books. These are types of traditional folk and tribal media. Folk media is a genuine means of communication and a true carrier of culture amongst various people from generations to generations. If we go back into history, this is the truth. Change is a universal thing in human society. Every society has experienced change internally or externally. Social change is, in, is any change that has taken place in a society according to new words in encyclopedia. Social change is a general term which refers to change in the nature, the social institution, the social behavior, or the social relations of a society, community of people, or other social structures and any event or action that affects a group of individuals that have shared values or characteristics, acts of advocacy for the cause of change in society in normative ways. The definition of social change. Media life can bring positive social change by presenting the real picture of their struggle and by making the government aware of the aware of several issues. The conclusion, the social change is an everlasting phenomenon in every society. The means of communication through mass form, indigenous form, cultural form, or traditional form, etc. Even if social scientists and media scholars are new, that new media such as mobile, internet, social networking science, and all digital forms has become part of everyday life. Thus, there was a need to understand the media life. 
and its importance and the process of social change among these communities. Looking at media life and understanding in the context of communication through culture and society, rather than examining modern and new media is an important factor. It has been contextualized from the perspective of communication irrespective of modern and cultural form and it is overlapping context. Thank you.